in this video we will discuss the problem egg dropping puzzle the problem is that there are n identical eggs given to you and you have the access to a k floor building right so there is a building that has k floors to it and you have n identical eggs so you have been given n identical eggs and you have a k floored building right so you have a building with k floor and then in this problem it says that what you have to do is there exists the floor so floor exists from uh, like there exists a floor from 0 till k okay such that any egg dropped at a height higher than f will break so so it says that there will be there will be existing a floor such that this floor value f can lie between 0 to k and if this in the special thing about this f is that if any egg right any egg dropped at a higher floor then f will break so you have to find what they like suppose this is a building suppose this is a building which is having k different floors so in this building what will happen they will exist a floor f such that if you drop if you drop the egg if you drop the egg any from any floor higher than f then it will break okay so if you drop drop it from let's say f plus 1 or if you drop it from f plus 2 or any other floor then the egg will break okay then the egg will break otherwise if you let's say drop it from f or if you drop it from below right if you drop it from the floor f itself if you drop the egg from floor f or if you if you drop it below below the floor f in that case the egg does not break okay so what you have to do is you have to you have to follow these rules that are given here so the egg that survives a fall can be used again okay so if an egg survives a particular fall so it can be used again a broken egg must be discarded so if a it's if a egg gets broken then it shall be discarded and the effect of a fall is the same for all the eggs okay now the if the egg does not break at a certain floor it will not break any at any floor below so suppose there is a building suppose this building is there and we try to drop the eggs one by one right suppose if the building is there suppose if this building is what we have okay with k different floors if suppose that i try to drop the egg from this particular floor if we try to drop the egg from this floor okay so if it if the egg does not break from this floor then it will also not break from this floor it will also not break from this floor so it says that basically if you try to drop it from the ith floor and it does not break from the ith floor in that case it will not break from the i minus 1th floor i minus 2th floor as well and that is very obvious right because if it does not break from the ith floor so it is it will not uh, fall from it will not break from the any floors below that and if an egg floors uh, if an egg breaks at a certain floor it may break from the above floor as well so if let's say if there is a, a building like this and you have k different floors in it right so it says that if there is a floor let's say if the break, if you drop it from this particular floor and the egg breaks in that case what will happen is it is not necessary that the egg will not break from this floor the egg can also break from this floor as well so if it floors if it breaks from a particular upper floor it can also break from a lower floor as well so these are the conditions that have been given to you now the problem further says that you have to return the minimum number of moves that you need to de determine with certainty that what is the value of f okay so in this case if we try and observe actually the problem statement is a little bit uh, tricky because the problem statement should have written that you have to return the minimum number of moves in the worst case because there can be many cases here now one of the basic thing uh, basic things that one could have done is like suppose if there are k different floors here so we could have tried to drop it from here okay then we could have tried to drop it from here then we could have tried to, to drop it from here and then if it breaks from this floor then we can say that the floor would have been this f the f floor that we were asked would have been this floor but this is not a good way this is not this is not an optimal way to do the task in case if the values are very very high so instead of this what we can do is suppose we were given just one egg okay if we were given just one egg so will you drop it from here no you will not drop it from the top floor because suppose you drop it from here okay if it breaks then you cannot check whether it can break from this floor this floor or this floor okay so you need to be very very optimal in terms of dropping the x because the number of x that you can drop is very very limited so in that case what we can try to do here is suppose this is a building given here okay if this is a building so it has suppose it has k floors to it like sup suppose this building has k floors and you have been given nx okay so in this case what we can do is 
Suppose if we try to drop it, suppose if we try to drop the egg, suppose there is an ith floor, suppose I try to drop it from the ith floor. So there can be two chances, right? There can be two circumstances. Either the egg will break, okay? Or either the egg does not break. There can be two circumstances that can be there. So either the egg can break or it cannot break. So if it if it breaks, right? Like suppose it does not break. So if it does not break, then that, what does it mean? So it will mean that basically the number of x will remain the same, right? If n n x were there, so n number of x will remain the same. And I can say that what will, what should I do? If I cannot break it from ith floor, if I cannot break it till here, right? So if I cannot break it at the ith floor, so the problem has clearly mentioned that if I cannot break it from this floor, then I cannot break it from the below floors as well. So it will be a waste of time for us to check it from the below floors as well. So I can say that what in that case, what are the number of floors remaining? So the floors remaining are these, right? If k floors were there, so k minus i floors are remaining. So I'll try to drop it from k minus i remaining floors, okay? And suppose if it breaks, suppose if I drop it from the ith floor and if it breaks, so if I drop it from the ith floors and the egg breaks, in that case, the number of x will reduce by one. So the number of x will reduce by one for sure. And in this case, you can observe what will happen if uh, the number of x will reduce. Apart from this, it can also break. If it can break at this ith floor, it can also break from the floor below. So I'll now try to see whether they can be it can be uh, broken from the floor starting from starting till i minus 1th floor or not okay now when you get this like suppose you call recursively so you have now two opportunities either you just have n minus 1 x remaining and you have the floor as i minus 1 so again for this also you can run a loop and check for any of the jth floor let's say okay in case if i have taken i here so you can say that i can run a loop uh, from 1 starting from 1 till uh, I minus one and I can check here as well. Okay, this is the circumstance here as well also. Or and for this case also, for the other case also, when it does not break, then also I can run a loop at various junctions like J for various J's and I can check whether it breaks or not breaks. Now there can be many circumstances, but in this case they can be they can be two chances, right? At a particular cert if I'm talking about a certain floor I, then there are obviously two chances. The chance one is that it breaks, right? If it breaks, then that means that the number of x will remain uh, reduced by one, and the floors I can say that I will try to drop it from i like the floors that I can check from is i minus one because if it breaks from i, so I can check it from downwards. And if the I talk about the chance number two, so the chance two can be that it does not break, right? It, if it does not break, then what can happen is I can say that in that case the number of x will remain the same and the number of floors will be k minus i. Because uh, the leftover upper floors that are there, I will try to drop it from there, right? This is the case here. Now, if we see here in this problem, it says that we have to find the minimum moves. But what does it mean when they say, say minimum move? So, let's say if I ask you to do a particular task in minimum number of moves. So, in that case, you can say that maybe you can do it in like one day or you can do it in one week or something. But is it actually going to be optimal? No, because there can be certain circumstances, right? you should always tell the minimum amount of time that you should always tell the minimum time according to the worst case. You should always consider the worst case. Let's say if your exams are also coming and you have to prepare for them. So you'll consider that, okay, after like for one week, you, are, you have your exam and maybe after 10 days, you total 10 days, you can do your task. So you have to always consider for the worst case. So in this case, what we will do is we have to always minimize the worst case, right? So we will say that this is the chance, chance one and chance two. So what we will try to do is we will try to run for all i right for all i we will try to run and for all i we will get these chances okay so what is the like what is the chance here right so we will say that the worst case here is what the worst case is nothing but chance one maximum of the two chances is the worst case right because i i will always uh, if i am considering the worst cases so i'll always consider the maximum so in that case the maximum will be the maximum of the chance one comma chance two chance two and other than this, I also need to add one to it. Why am I adding one? Because I am taking this particular move. Now, if I'm considering a particular I, I so I'm taking one move. So that's why. And in the end, what I can say is every time I'll keep my answer updated as minimum of the all the worst cases, right? Minimum of all the worst cases. And this we will do recursively for all the possible values because we'll be passing this recursive calls for n minus one, like n minus one number of x and i minus one floors and for n floors and k minus i floors. So this is what we will be doing. So let us try and implement the code for this logic. So what we will be doing here is 
will initially be given the n the number of x and k is the number of floors here so what we will do here is let's say we write a recursive function here okay in which we will pass n that is the number of x and k is the number of floors now what we will do is we will write a recursive function so let's say we write int recursion in which we will pass the n value okay and we will pass the k as well okay after this what are the base cases here so suppose if only one egg is there right suppose if only one egg is there so if only like if so only one egg, egg is there if n is equal to one only so if only one egg if only one egg is there then you will try to drop it from here if only one egg is there and suppose k floors are remaining right k number of floors are remaining so in that case you will try to drop it from the bottom now you will try to drop it from this floor the bottom most floor if it breaks then you will uh, get your answer if it does like otherwise if it does not then you will try to uh, break it from the next floor if it does not break from there as well then you will try to break it from the next floor so in that case you will check for in the worst case you will be checking for all the k floors okay so if if it happens that uh, the number of x is remaining is just one in that case what you will do is you will return nothing but the number of uh, floors that is nothing but k and suppose if the number of remaining floors is zero in that case you will return what you will return zero only right so if it happens or if it happens that k is equal to zero in that case you will return zero only or if it happens that suppose there is just one floor in that case you will return k okay otherwise what you will try to do is otherwise you will declare an answer initially you will mark it as int maximum okay in the worst case you will mark it as int max and what we will do is you will say that you will iterate for uh, like you will iterate for all the possible values of i that you can have so basically what we can do here is we can say that for int i will be starting from uh, like i will be starting from 1 and i will be lesser than equal to the uh, the number of floors that is k and i plus plus for this recursive call k right after this what is the chance one the chance one is that suppose if it uh, suppose i drop it from the ith floor and the egg breaks so if the egg breaks then i will try to like if the egg breaks then the number of x reduces by 1 okay and in that case what happens i will try to check it for i minus 1 floors right so i'll recursively call for this this is when the egg breaks from the ith floor the other chance that i can have is the chance two is that i recursively call it and i pass it uh, like uh, in that case if i recursively call it it does not break so in that case what i will do is if i it does not break from the ith floor then i will call the recursive call for uh, because the n x are still remaining so n will be passed and k minus i number of floors are remaining so i'll pass k minus i floors okay this is when it does not break okay now we always mention that we will be considering what we will always be considering the worst case every time so worst case is what first of all we will take one chance here why am i adding one i am simply adding one here because we are simply adding the one here because it means that we are taking this one move okay and then we are considering every time the worst case so we'll consider the worst case of chance one and the chance two okay after this part is done so what we will do here is we will simply return the answer but we need to update the answer as well so answer will get updated from the minimum right we answer is what answer is always going to be the minimum of all the worst cases so answer is minimum of the current answer comma the current worst worst case okay so that is how i'll update it and this is how we will write it in the brute force manner so let us try and compile this to see if it works on the samples or not so you can see it works on the samples if i try to submit this particular code so in that case what will happen if we try to submit this code in this case it gives us gives us a time limit exceeded why does it gives us a time limit exceeded because if this is recursion right this is recursion so for every recursive call like for every recursive call that is from if i am currently at a recursive call let's say which is having uh, uh, n number of x and k number of floors in that case i have various opportunities right uh, like first floor second i when i is equal to 1 i is equal to 2 i is equal to 3 till i is equal to k so i have a lot of recursive calls okay then you can also understand that for every recursive call i am again having different recursive calls that i can have okay so they in this case you can observe that since this is the recursion so there will be a lot of functions that can be called again and again suppose there is a function that is already calculated in this particular recursive call okay so in that case i if it comes here if it comes here then will you go like if you have already gone so much down and if you have calculated this particular recursive call for the cert, for the given value of n and k then if this is the same overlapping sub problem you will not calculate it again so in that case we will use nothing but dp or you can say memoization concept okay if a particular sub problem is already calculated then we will not calculate it again and again so what we will do here is 
we will say simply say that uh, we will have a dp and in this case we can have a dp of uh, size uh, that is n is given as 2 200 and k is given as 200 so there are two parameters that are changing that is n and k so what we can do is we can declare a dp of 205 here okay and 205 here we can declare it as 201 201 respectively as well then what we need to do is we need to initialize our dp as minus 1 we will say that memset of dp comma minus 1 comma size of dp so we can also run loop in other languages to initialize our dp state all the dp states of the this 2d dp as minus 1 and what we can uh, what we can say after this is that we can simply say here that if if it happens suppose if the dp of uh, n and k if the particular if the case i'll not compute it again and i'll simply return the already calculated answer otherwise if it is not already calculated then I will simply calculate it. I'll call the recursion. I'll calculate it. Okay. Then we will store it and then return it. Okay. We'll calculate it, store it so that next time we come, we do not have to calculate it again. And then we will simply return this DP. Okay. Now let us try and compile this code. So it seems to work on the samples. Let us try and submit our uh, code as well. So you can see that solution was able to pass all the test cases. Not talking about the time complexity. So the time complexity, since we are, uh, since we are checking for n, like there are n, uh, like k number of egg, k number of floors, uh, like there are k number of floors, and every time I am iterating, so there is k, and for n x, so the time complexity will be nothing but k into n. In case if you understood this explanation, so make sure to hit the like button. Thank you.